Ready? Chapter 16 Heritage The Issa was whistling happily as they walked towards the next camp. The sun was back up again, and the water was glistening as they walked past the lake. So, how old are you? Atle turned his head towards Aino. She looked back at him. He must have been thinking about it since the bunker. I don't know, she answered. You don't remember when you were born? He asked a bit surprised. I do, but I lost track of time many years ago. It's the 27th of September, year 109, Keon said, sounding very sure of the fact. Wow, you've got a good memory. I can't even remember what I ate for breakfast this morning, Tore commented. That's because you didn't eat anything, you were interjected. Ah, true, Tore said and nodded. I know, because it's my birthday in three days, Keon replied. Oh, then we have to celebrate. I hope we'll find some alcohol until then. You all looked hopeful. Just want an excuse to drink. Keon glanced at him sideways. Well, why not kill two birds with one stone while we're at it? Yua said and grinned. Atle cleared his throat to interrupt the derailed conversation. So, about your age? He once again looked at Aino. She looked back at him. Well, if it's the year 109, I'll be turning 199 this year. Damn, almost 200 years, you're old! You all exclaimed. Thank you for that insight. I was totally unaware of that fact. Aino responded sarcastically. Atle once again shot Yuwa some angry looks. For being someone he claimed to look up to, Yuwa sure insulted their creator a lot. Yuwa, in turn, completely ignored Atle and kept going. I mean, don't get me wrong, you look good for your age. I'd still do you. Atle felt all the blood drain from his face. What the hell was that man saying? Can you for once shut up, you imbecile? He screamed at Yuwa. Everyone went quiet. Atle was known for his calm nature. None of the officers had ever heard him scream like that before. Yuwa opened his mouth, but Atle beat him to it. Say one more thing and I'll jam my fist down your throat. Yuwa closed his mouth again. Had he gone too far? He looked at his creator. She looked as indifferent as always. No matter what he said or did, the most he would get out of her was a sarcastic comment. He wanted a reaction from her. No matter what he did to prove himself, it never seemed to impress her. His eyes moved to Keon. What was it that made him so special to her? I heard you found a map. Lisa's voice came from behind them. Several, actually. It's a book filled with the maps of the world, Keon responded. Wow, we only have one big map of the world. It's used in teaching. What? You have a world map? I'm jealous. Before today, I had never seen one, Yuwa exclaimed. It's really worn out now, though. I wish I could have brought some from a childhood home. We had many of them there, Lisa lamented. Where did you live? Yuwa asked curiously. Originally in a castle in the former capital, before the ruler took the power. Our dynasty opposed him and his rule. We were the royal family when the old world ended. My older relatives still felt like the throne was our birthright. But in the end we lost. Many died. Those who lived fled. The ruler took our castles, our homes, everything we had once owned. He renamed the former capital in honor of himself. Ulfstad, and made the yellow wolves the symbol of his army, his rule. Then he started hunting us down one by one. It was only a matter of time until we would be found. When they came knocking at our door, we knew what was coming. Till and I were small enough to hide in the kitchen lift. My mum told us to wait there, no matter what we heard, and not come out until it was quiet. Then run south and find a man named Victor Utrikson. He had deserted from the wolf army and was part of another one, a blood army. She told us he would help us, if we told him which family we were from. 
Disa took a deep breath before she continued. We heard their screams. They still echo in my nightmares to this day. They were all dead, slaughtered by the wolf army soldiers. I saw my dad's body severed in two in front of me. Tia was crying his eyes out, laying on his mother's dead body. My brother and sister, their faces were so bashed in, I could hardly distinguish them. My mother, she was pinned up against the wall. They had taken our kitchen knives and stabbed her with them so hard that she was still attached to the wall with them inside her. I think a part of us died that day with our families. We ran for our lives. We slept where we could. Sometimes we would run into people who would help us along the way, give us shelter and food. I especially remember one old couple. They even offered us to stay with them for a longer time. They were really sweet, but I knew they couldn't defend us if the ruler came knocking. Plus, we didn't want to put them in harm's way because of us. So we ran until we were south enough to where people could point us to the man we were looking for. When we met him and Nila, we knew we were in the right place. No one else could make us as strong as them. The year we turned 13, we both joined as cadets in Nila's blood army, and once graduated, we both became ranked officers right away. I am 100% sure it was because of our family name. Victor loved the fact that he had former royals in his army. Aristocrats were always premiered before anyone else by him. That man was high on power and treated those under him like dirt. If you wanted to get anywhere in the army, you had to lick his boots. If you didn't, not even your family name could save you. Victor wasn't a good man, but he did help us. I give him that. We had heard the rumors of how he liked to force himself onto women, but it wasn't until he did it to me that I understood just how rotten he was. It was after the ceremony, when I became a second lieutenant. He came into my room and closed the door. I remember that crooked smile on his face as he told me that he was the reason I was promoted. He had recommended me and fought for me. So I owed him my body in return for everything he had done for me. He tried to push me down on the bed and have his way with me. Who did he think I was? An innocent, frightened little girl? Did he think I'd never seen evil before? That I didn't know how to defend myself? I mean, look at me. I was big even before I got Aino's blood in me. I spent every day, year after year, sparring with Tia, and that man is built like an ox. When you spar with someone like that, you have to get resourceful in order to have a chance to win. She looked over at Till, who was too far away to hear what she was saying as he had taken a detour for some berries. He still waved at her in total oblivion to what she was talking about. She smiled at him and waved back before she continued. Point is, Victor wasn't as strong as Till is. All that general got from me was a black eye and some broken ribs. What had he expected? I was more skilled in close combat than he ever was. Afterwards, he pretended like nothing. Like his wounds had come out of thin air. He didn't make sure I never got another promotion, though. I don't even think Nila knew why I was held back. He just went with what Victor said. It wasn't until after Victor's death that Nila gave me a promotion. Right up to Major General, from Second Lieutenant. A big jump indeed. Almost a shame Victor never got to see that. He would have hated it. <laughs>